Hello and welcome to your Bullet Crossfire 2430BH. Starting up front, we have a light, just in case we need to hook up at night. We have the retract and extend for your power jack. Since this is electric, if this ever electrically goes out, go ahead and peel this tab up. If you put a tool in there, you can manually override this uh, to move it up or down. Come into your propane. This little tab here indicates uh, what tank it is drawing the propane from along with the reading what I mean by reading is right behind here there's that little clear thing with red inside that red indicates that there's no propane running through so that's what I mean by reading it reads whatever tank it's pointed at and whatever one it's taking that propane from this is your battery disconnect you control everything here power on power off and remove cover so that you are able with that switch to cut all power to the inside of your camper through the battery let's go ahead and flip that switch and it'll be completely cut off down here if you do get a solar panel just make sure it is that plug you have uh both stabilizer jacks here if you retract and extend, I'll lower both for you. There we go. So you just wanna to go until they're basically just touching the ground. These are stabilizers. They're not made for holding lots of weight. They're just made to not have your camper roll around as much and move. And sometimes it was hard to see, but in the back one, it kind of went, um, what I'm about to explain. One side will go down before the other. That's perfectly normal. As soon as one hits, the other one will then fly down. But otherwise, like this one, they both went down at the same time. Back there, one went down before the other. That's normal. Both ways are normal. Coming to your water connections here. This is gonna be your fresh tank. It's your fresh tank. That is going to be water you take with you. So what I mean by that, is when you go out to the middle of nowhere and you're camping and you need to have a solid water supply, go ahead and fill, fill this up before you go on vacation. Um, once you fill that up, it's just a big old tank. You will turn on the water pump switch, which I'll show you inside, but that'll take this water and push it through your system so you have running water. When you don't have a city water connection hookup, which is what I'm getting to next, the city water connection hookup is for uh, campgrounds. So when you pull up to a campground, get into your spot, this is the water connection that you're going to need. Um, since campgrounds are pushing for a lot of people, they're pushing a lot of power through those lines for that water. So what I do recommend getting is a water pressure regulator. It'll just help dumb down the pressure so it won't end up blowing your lines. And for that fresh tank, if you still have excess water left over, and you've no, nothing to do with it, just go ahead, open that little tab, and the water will start draining from your fresh tank out there. So this is gonna be your shore power or your camp power here. This is your black tank flush. It's your black tank flush. Basically what this does is when you put a pressurized hose into here, this actually acts as a sprinkler inside of your black tank. So when you put all that water in there, it turns on a sprinkler inside your black tank and helps uh, give it one last wash, getting the crap or toilet paper that may have gotten stuck on the sides, gives it one last push through to make sure it's clean. You have your outside shower here, hot on the left, cold on the right, and then you have a curly hose nozzle for that. Right beneath it here, you have your gray and black tank poles. So considering your black tank, that's obviously gonna be your toilet. So go ahead, pull that. That's what is what you're gonna wanna drain first. So go ahead, drain that. Then go ahead, do the black tank flush to give it one last wash. So make sure nothing's stuck. And then I recommend doing the gray tank last just because it's the cleanest out of these two. So I recommend doing this last just to give it one last little push through, one last rinse before you go ahead and put your hands back on it. Just in case you have a TV outside. 
this is backup camera ready so if you do purchase a backup camera let's go ahead and pop that plate off put the camera inside with the tablet you put it into your cigarette lighter once you do that go ahead and turn your running lights on once your running lights are on it'll start to feed the camera through outside spray port so give me your outside kitchen area there you have your fridge along with this little table just like that you use this get it in there easier just like that back of your refrigerator if you ever need to access it this is your furnace exhaust so this does get very hot um, what I do recommend doing is if there's any little kids in the area or someone who may not know just let them know do not touch this because this will burn them this is your water heater it looks a lot more complicated than it is but what you're gonna want to do is take this little piece here put it on the spout that's a one and one sixteenth socket. Just make sure it's nice and tight. Once it's tight, go ahead, go to the inside, turn on the hot side of your faucet and make sure it doesn't sputter when it, it's going to at first. Uh, all that is is just the air getting completely pushed out of your tank um, and it will then turn into a steady flow. Obviously it's not gonna get hot yet because you have a water heater switch on the inside which you can turn on and that's when your water starts to heat. So water does get stagnant. So what I do recommend doing is releasing the pressure. This is to empty it. Release the pressure, you'll hear it hiss. Once it's done hissing, go ahead, take your socket, pull this off. Once this is off, all the water will start to drain through here. And then once again, just make sure this is still up because that makes the water come out faster. Right behind your wheels here, you have your low point drains. If they will decide to come into camera, there you are. Those are gonna be your low point drains. So that's the lowest point of your camper. So hot and cold lines to empty them out. Just go ahead and open those up. For your stairs, they just fold. And then fold again. And then to bring it back out, same situation. Give it one last little extra push. Otherwise, they just fold up and you just kind of pull up and push it. Here's that curly hose that I mentioned earlier that goes into your outside shower. And then coming to your awning here, go ahead, pull that little tab off and that'll be a manual override. So once again, take the tab off, put a tool in there and you can reel it in or out. Coming inside of your camper here, you have all of your main controls. Starting up top, we have all of your readers. So battery, fresh tank, black and gray. Then you have your ceiling lights, which you can also toggle by clicking a little button right in the middle. Porch lights, which turn on your awning LED. And your water pump. So that water pump is what I told you about earlier, talking about the fresh water tank. Uh, once again, if you're out in the middle of nowhere, you fill that tank, bring it with you, turn this button on, and then it'll take water from that fresh tank and push it through your lines. And you have two elements to your water heater, electric and gas. For example, to get the most heat out of your water, go ahead and do both. So if you need to take a really hot shower or something along the lines, go ahead and just do both at the same time. Uh, this is going to be your slide out which I will show you. It'll die out when it's fully extended. For your awning, I'll fully extend this for you. What you're gonna wanna look for is a little flap that comes down and then you'll see that little black bar going across. That's when you know you're fully extended. Just like that. There we go. That's about perfect. So once again, I'll get closer. 
flap down, you can see the black bar. Basically, you can go out a little bit farther than this as long as it doesn't start to reel in the opposite way. So when it's fully like this, you know it's fully extended. Also to pitch it for the rain, because it's destined to rain at some point, go ahead and pull down and the awning will tilt to then let the rain water roll off one side. It claims you can reel it in like this, but I just recommend bringing it back up. I'd rather just be safe than sorry. Fully in. This is coming to your uh, thermostat. Fan on, cool on, and furnace. And then you can also do the um, fan speed with the fan button. And of course your temperature with the higher and lower on the right side here. Coming down underneath, tap to turn on. Obviously your volume. Zone one are gonna be your inside speakers. If you hold, you can turn them off. And then you have your AM, FM, USB, Bluetooth, and source. You can also tap to mute and hold to turn off. Coming to your keys here, you have your purple keys for your main doors. These are gonna be for your baggage doors outside and this is gonna be like a miscellaneous key. So this would be for, for example, like an outside shower of some sort. Coming to your stove top and your oven. Let's turn these on. Just press, turn, and then you spark to the right, and that spark will then ignite. Same goes for all three. For your oven, it's a little bit different. You click, you turn, this little flame symbol. Once you see a tiny little flame appear in the back of your oven, go ahead and then turn to your desired temperature. And you always want to turn this to the right. There's even little arrows reminding you because if you turn to the left, it will actually snap off. Coming into the fridge here. To adjust your temperature, all you gotta do is raise and lower that. And then for your freezer, it's all on top here. It's gonna check. And then if it can't find anything, then it'll just go to gas, which you can also, when you turn this, click this in, it'll go to auto, and it'll check between gas or electric. And then if you click out, it's just all gonna be gas. Once again, for lights, click. So this is just open. And close. Right behind me here, we have your breakers and fuses. Here's all the breakers, they're all labeled just like a house. And then these fuses, I do recommend bringing extra fuses just in case. Would rather be safe than sorry. Right behind here, we have your carbon monoxide detector. You can tell it's on by the green light here. Uh, this, like I said, as a safety feature, this always stays on, even if your battery disconnect is off. Well disconnect is on so if you have no power this will always run off of your battery with that being said this little green light will kill your battery so what i do recommend doing is if you're going to leave your camper for about three to four days just go ahead and take the negative end off of your battery then that'll finally kill this little light and it won't read anymore Coming to your toilet, it's just a foot flush. Um, what you are going to need is toilet solution along with RV grade toilet paper. That uh, toilet paper will help break down easier so it won't clog your lines and the solution will help break down solids and smells. Go to your fan, open up, and then this little switch here activates your fan. You do have a TV mounting bracket location here. 
Uh, if you do include a TV here, here's all of your supplies that you're gonna need. Well, not supplies, but we're gonna need to plug it in. For the bed, there'll be a little wood piece underneath. Just go ahead and lift that up. And that'll get you access to your underground storage. Well, underbelly storage, I should say. 